Welcome. We are so glad you joined us as we return to the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center for Native Plants at Noon. I'm Tammy Thompson, Outreach and Conference Manager for Deep Roots, and this is one of my favorite days of the month, as many of you already know. Uh, please join us next week for the Plan It Native Landscapes Conference. We are so excited for this conference. The um, we have something for all experience levels for native plant gardeners or land manager. The opening night at Boulevard Brewery will be a great night to network, learn and mingle with friends, enjoy free food and drink, which I think couldn't be better, plants and, and drinks. There are a few field trips left on Tuesday and the virtual sessions go from Wednesday through Friday. If you can't be there for everything, don't fear. We record all sessions and make them available for a full year. So you'll not only have the sessions available for a full year, you'll also have all the resources that our speakers are, are providing to you in that, um, in that with those sessions as well. It is a win, 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 and we want you there. So, <clears throat> and did I mention? you'll meet Alex and Sydney in real life there. So those of you who follow Alex and Sydney here at the Anita B. Gorman uh, Discovery Center, you will have a chance to actually visit with them. So to, without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen here. Sometimes tech takes time, so I appreciate your patience. Uh, today, Alex and Sydney are going to talk about monarchs. The whole show is dedicated to monarchs. Tis the season. And just in time for Monarch Mania at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. During the program, if you have questions, please note those in the Facebook comments or in the Q&A tool on Zoom. And we will get to as many of those as we can. I'll be using the chat to send you the plants mentioned and links they share. And be sure to stay to the end to have a chance to win a prize. So let's get started. First of all, we want to express a big thank you to the Missouri Department of Conservation for their partnership on this series and everything they do to help encourage and empower people to plant more native plants. We want to thank you too for your support and the feedback you give us to improve on this series. We really do take to heart uh, this, the comments that you give us and the feedback, you know, good and bad. So we really do want to continually improve. So thank you very much. With that, I would love to welcome landscape specialist Sydney Ross and Alex Daniel at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. Sydney and Alex, take it away. Hey, Tammy. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much. Hello. This is Alex. This is Sydney. And we're so excited to host today's episode of Native Plants at Noon. And as Tammy said, we're going to be talking all about monarchs today, yes. including their migration pattern, um, their host plants, as well as plants that they nectar on and that you can put in your own gardens. So. Yeah. And today we're starting here in the lobby at the Anita B. Gorman Conservation Discovery Center. Alex is going to talk a little bit more about the different life stages of monarchs before we head outside for some monarch tagging. Yeah, so let's mention up top here that we have our monarch mania event coming up, like Tammy said. So we are in preparation mode mm -hmm. for that. So we've got our setup right here with our live monarchs. Yes. So for the past few weeks, we've had monarch caterpillars and eggs going on in our tank here. Yes. And yeah, do you want to show them I how? do, but real quick. Yeah. Uh, so this Saturday, monarch mania from yeah, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Alex yeah. will be here for a honeysuckle buyback program. Um, do you want to talk just a little bit about that at the top yeah. before we jump in? Yeah, so the honeysuckle training, you don't need to bring me your honeysuckle. <laughs> Please, Please don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> but just a picture or a strong promise that you'll remove some invasive bush honeysuckle from your yard um, or your or whatever, you know, woodland area you take care of anywhere that you steward the land. Um, yeah. So we're going to be trading for some uh, native uh, plants and shrubs that are good replacements for honeysuckle. Yeah. So join Just us. Just bring me a picture or a strong promise. <laughs> and we'll get you covered. All <laughs> yes. right. Let's dive into monarchs. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. We're so, crazy. all right. What do we got here, Alex? Yeah. So we've got on the big screen here, we've got our monarch caterpillar. 
And um, as many of you know, monarch caterpillars can only eat one kind of plant, which is the milkweed. And this one is on our common milkweed, which is one of the milkweeds that we have the most of here at the Discovery Center. But there are lots of different types of milkweeds and we're gonna be giving away, several, I think four different species of milkweeds on, on, for, on Saturday. Yeah, we've got um, butterfly milkweed, common milkweed, marsh milkweed, and showy milkweed. Yes. So there's all kinds of milkweeds out there for every situation. This one is the taller pink one that's already bloomed for the year. So the monarchs are just using them for, for food plants right now. Yes. And so this one is probably a third instar. So there are stages to the caterpillars and they go through their instars and then they make their chrysalis and pupate um, hanging from, they'll usually hang off the lid of this container. Um, in the wild, they'll hang off of a stick. Can I see the different um, yep, stages like a stick here? That's in a different, a different species, and then they'll emerge and um, and close <laughs> is the technical term for it, and they'll go on their way. So the migration of the monarchs. Do you want to show them this? Oh, real oh, quick. Yes. Oh, very lovely. <laughs> Pat Whalen <laughs> created this common milk shirt. Isn't that gorgeous? That's that's a okay. nice way of printing with milkweed. Yes, okay. I, love I want one, Pat. They're I want so one cute. Too. Better start Super selling. cute. Okay. So here's the migration pattern. We have two different sets of monarchs. We have the Eastern and the Western monarchs. And, and which ones do we have? Eastern. Yeah, the yeah. Eastern. Yeah, monarch. the Rocky split the two groups. And so we're in the Eastern migration right here. And so the last generation of monarchs are going to be coming through in September to November. Um, we've seen them start to come through already. So the monarchs that are hatched here that leave from here, from Kansas City, are the ones that are gonna go all the way back down to Mexico wow. for the winter. That's amazing. Okay. So that's 2000 miles that they travel from Canada all the way down to yes. Mexico once they reach that final generation. Right, yeah. so the generations go back down like this. So right? yeah, and so, but that is the longest flight from their last generation down to their overwintering yeah. population. And then you can see down here on this map, what happens during the spring mi migration, yeah. March to June. Come back so. up here and they go back up to Canada mm -hmm. for the summer. That's very cool. So yeah, so we talk about milkweeds, right? And how important milkweeds are, but there are other plants that we really need right now. Milkweeds aren't even blooming right now. Most mm -hmm. milkweeds aren't blooming right now. And so we need these other plants that are going to be high in um, protein and fats for all of our pollinators and especially our monarchs that need that energy to right carry before on. winter so, yeah yeah we're going to talk about some other plants that are important for monarchs but we thought we would show you are, you, are we ready we're ready tagging? we're going to okay. do a little bit of monarch tagging okay. um but alex why do we do monarch tagging outside okay so <laughs> <laughs> i could do it outside why i'm not going to open this right here is because uh, if you if you accidentally let go of the monarch before you tag it, then it could just fly away. Well, <laughs> into the in building. Here, then it takes a couple of days of vents and, and uh, staff chasing <laughs> and it around excitement. The and uh, yeah, <laughs> perfect. So if you want to yeah. go ahead and take that milk so we have, yeah, out. So we have this monarch that we just caught this morning. In fact, if you want to see a really funny video of us chasing monarchs, yes. you can check out. Uh, our Instagram, Sid and Al, to see a really funny video of us running around trying to catch it. It's kind of the best part about uh, Monarch Mania is to watch kids and their parents running around with nets <laughs> and just making fools of themselves. It's kind of my favorite. It's amazing. Okay, you grab the Monarchs and okay. I will grab the stickers. Okay, you got that. Perfect. And we're going to head outside. Let's go to the courtyard. Yeah. Do we have any questions or anything yet? We could probably really take cool. one question about if you have a question about monarchs, you could take it before we get outside. We don't have any questions just yet, Perfect. but I will read you some of the chat. Alex, Sounds great. Alex and Sydney are national treasures, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen says hi, too girl. Generous. Too generous. Too generous. Um, oh, hello, oh, Kathleen. Devin actually asked a question. Devin asks, have you tagged yeah. any monarchs yet this year? No, no this, is this is gonna be our you first. Guys are first. Woo -hoo. Okay, so Sydney is gonna be the tagger today. I, I just have to yeah. say, one of my superpowers is actually coming up 
and catching monarchs without a net and with my fingers. I yes. had several like that last year. I haven't tried this year. Yes, we're going to talk about some flowers that you can just sit next to and the yes. monarchs will come right to you. It's oh, so easy. Okay, okay so can do you want to talk you about know, Monarch Watch a little bit you or know, do you want me to? Will you talk about it a little bit? Because I'm still yeah. becoming familiar with it. Two years ago, okay. the first time doing Monarch Watch. So, yeah. So Monarch Watch, I don't know if this is, yeah, you can see kind of the the uh, monarchwatch.org that's You're the based website in there Lawrence, Kansas. yeah that's very cool and so the tags themselves look like this like that circle they're little tiny stickers and, and they, they each have a number you don't hurt the monarch um yeah i think i have these upside down they're tiny <laughs> they're so small um and yeah they don't hurt the monarch and they um mon i've have we seen monarchs that are like and other butterflies that are like half their wings are ripped off they can still fly <laughs> yeah, they can they're still very fly. strong they're strong okay, enough so to handle a small sticker so oh yeah here we go um so we have a tag data sheet and okay. you just you uh, write down the tag number um so i'm gonna do this one 425 and then the date today i'll fill this out in a little bit but you fill out yeah the date um the city that you tagged the state zip code etc and then what this does is hopefully if the monarch makes it all the way from whoop, uh, from <laughs> kansas city to mexico uh once they get down to um that area then hopefully others can catch them and see where they came from so we can kind of track the data track the migration patterns more specifically yeah uh, so it's really a cool thing and anyone can do it it's uh, community science yeah um, so you can get involved also if you go to monarchwatch.org for more information on that um, right. or join us saturday and do some monarch tagging here with us and you can learn how to do it and feel confident to do it on your own yeah and you get a little certificate it's so cute yes. kids love it it's like a little little certificate with your um butterfly uh, number on it so you can go back and check and see if anyone um uh, found your butterfly okay cool so, so how what's the technique sydney very gentle very gentle um you don't want to panic just go nice and slow be calm this monarch is very calm sometimes well we've worn this one out a bit and i'd say that and it starts flying it around. did start fluttering so i may what i may need is a reminder alex on exactly where the okay is, so, but once i get it what can i say one tip first sure. when you're collecting insects monarchs um butterflies are pretty easy because they're always going to fly up so use that to your advantage you've got it great okay look at this she's caught it um with all four wings together that's the important part so if you've got firmly all four all the front four wings in the hind I'm wings just kind of together holding. you see how the wings like can you just hold it the so two wings um separate here just put your fingers right here yeah so very gentle all. firm yeah so um, it can't then, hurt itself. So when, also one good thing to show us is, um, Alex, remind us how you can tell the difference between a male and a female. Oh, okay. So let's see if we can get in. <sighs> oh, sorry. I don't know where the sorry. camera is. It's here it is. Side. Yeah, there we okay. go. I'm sorry. I messed up the buttons. Okay, here we go. So this one is a female because it is missing this line. Sorry like about a the connector fingers. line. There's a, no, a lot. This line right here is straight. On that line, on males, there's a gland, a reproductive um, gland right here. So, so there's a bump. Bulbous. There's a bump on that second line. I'd call that the second line up. Okay. I know that's kind of tricky to um, imagine, but if you see a female and a male, and we can show that in the lobby too, we've got a female and a male next to each other, and you can see. Okay, so the perfect spot for the sticker, the right spot, is right here on okay. the on the uh, hind wing. Yeah. Perfect. And I'm just very firmly, gently, gently pressing firmly. So you're not squeezing the abdomen or anything. And yeah. then did you get the number already? I wrote the number okay, down. Great. And now, so you want to record if it was a female, yes. if it was, or, you know, what the what, female or male and where, if it was caught or if it was hand yeah, raised. Uh, golden rod. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's true. If you raise monarchs, make sure you do some research on that first. Um, and then indicate that if you do. Yeah. So we have some rigid goldenrod here, Solidago rigida. And I'm just going to see if this monarch will hold on to it. She may fly she right away. Fly. <laughs> yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. She went up in the oak to rest. Perfect. All yeah, right, good job, Sydney. Up you did it. Fairy. Okay. We're going to make our way. So, monarchs. Oh, boy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I turned it, off. Turn it back on. We're having some issues with the stabilizer. So the issues are that I'm holding it. Yeah, I was having issues earlier too. So I'm kind of 
Okay, so now that we've talked about monarchs and their host plants, which is milkweed, right? If we didn't make it clear enough, monarchs uh, lay their eggs on any type of milkweed. It's the only plant that monarch caterpillars can eat. So that's why everyone's so excited about milkweed because it's a really great poster child for that intricate relationship between um, our wildlife and our flora. Yeah, a really, really specific relationship between a um, one type of pollinator and one type of plant. Yeah. They, some of relationships like that get even more niche, um, the further you look into it, but, and then sometimes they're broader with more, um, generalist, um, uh, the things that are generalist host for a host plant. Yeah. Well, I guess Does what, that makes sense? <laughs> I think so. Words. I think what I'm trying to drive home is uh, monarchs are a great way to spark your curiosity about these relationships. Yes. But once you are inspired by monarchs, take a deeper look and check out other plants and other yes. insects in their relationship together because it's it's really cool. And monarchs get the most attention, but there's other species that are really interesting too. <laughs> I'm gonna walk into a side. <laughs> I should have just let you. <laughs> that okay, so we're heading to the funny. prairie. Tammy, do we have any questions right now before we get to some of Monarch's favorite nectarine plants? We do actually, and and they were in the Q and A the whole time. My apologies, oh, I, just, <laughs> I didn't open it up. Chris asks, and that's a great question: Is registration required for the honeysuckle training on Saturday? Hi, Chris. No, no. it was Chris Matter. Was it Chris Matter? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it's not required. It's just a walk up situation. Yeah, the whole, uh, event is a walk up. You don't yeah. Have to register on Saturday to show up. Yeah. And the honeysuckle thing is if you've been to Monarch Mania before, it's just going to be kind of part of it. So, yeah, it's not registration and it's just first come, first serve. So, once we get run out of shrub, yeah, get there early because we are definitely going to run out of shrubs. Yes. And if you're, which I'm excited about, in but that uh, trade in program, come find Alex because she's going to be the yes. one in charge. So, look for her. Yeah. There will be, him. yeah, there will be two different plants. There will be just the plant giveaway that's the smaller plants that um, are free for everyone. And then the honeysuckle one is, is uh, a separate table with the shrubs and yeah. bigger plants on it. So we're back here from Rose Prairie. Oh my gosh, how do we keep ending up back here? It's kind of cool that you all got to see Primrose Prairie, the garden I designed and we installed last year through all the different um, seasons. So we're getting it coming into fall, late summer. I want to yes. talk um, quickly though about a technique that we tried that did not work well in our garden. Um, so we talked about the Chelsea chop, which is when we cut a plant back um in about june july is kind of pushing it but somewhere around then june's are like uh late summer early fall bloomers you could push it into july for and i'll talk more about this in our presentation at planet native yes, but, about um, timings of the chelsea chap yeah stuff. so what we learned with um solidago rigida or uh rigid goldenrod which was the plant we tried to release the monarch on earlier is that we had a couple things working against us this is our theory anyway so it's this plant here it was a little rough back because this is getting so tall in the garden here and um, you can see it it looks a little damaged it didn't do well um, some of them came back and you know the reason we encourage the chelsea chop is to make them shorter so more compact and have more blooms which it did put out some more uh blooms and it's going to pop here any day now but where we where i think we messed up is it was so hot and dry and we did not give these plants any extra water. And so they really struggled. Yeah, um, and they're only two years old too. Two years old. So it might've been too so much stress Could have been, them. but we learned a lot from that experience. And that's just, I like to point this out because I think it's really important to know um, gardens are ever changing and we're constantly learning things about it. And that's one of the joys of native plant gardening. Yes. Really nature in general. So that was yeah. kind of an interesting observation, but yeah, the other plants we want to talk about in this garden are awesome monarch nectarine plants yes so i mentioned earlier can i talk about this yeah. one really quick is the eastern are you gonna go eastern yeah. first okay eastern blazing star is the plant i was talking about earlier that you don't really have to walk away from it uh if you're trying to catch monarchs mm -hmm. you just if you just hang out we'll near it for a time. while um there will be one and it won't won't want to leave that's right so i'm gonna hop into the garden here now to i'm gonna hop with you um so we've got this is the Eastern um, Blazing Star or Liatris scariosa. So there's a lot of different Liatris species that are native to Missouri. Um, in this bed, we planted three different types. So Pycnostasia 
was this first one with the large spikes here. Um, it's already gone to seed. And then following And that, that one is feeding, currently feeding finches yes. and all kinds of birds. And they attract really cool camouflage loopers earlier in the year. Oh, so then this, the one to bloom after that is the uh, Liatris gariosa here. Rough blazing star is one common name for it. And it, that it, Savannah it, is this one. Yeah. Rough, it's the um, more for Aspera, don't you think? Oh gosh, yeah, I'm getting they all they names. all their common names are tricky, but I think Savannah or Eastern Savannah is the, or is, Eastern. is more common. Sorry, that's what I one. meant. Yeah, and then then so um Eastern Blazing Star blooms after Prairie Blazing Star, yeah. which is this one. Yeah. And they then, all look very <laughs> different, but their <laughs> common names are very similar. Uh, you all know what we think common names are arbitrary. So. That's right. Get your face in there. <laughs> <laughs> See my face. It's very serious. It's very serious. Okay. So here's Liatris aspera, and I just, I think this is such a beautiful plant, even before it opens up. Um, you trying to get some shade? I can't here? see. Oh, I got it. Okay, it's really sunny out here, y'all. We'll see if our phone overheats again. <laughs> um, so I love how tight the buds are before they open up, and they're really pale and geometric and very interesting. And then something also very cool about uh, Blazing Star in general is that they start blooming from the top down. Um, and so they start, yeah, they start their bloom at the top and work their way down, kind of like a firework. Um, so if you want um, uh, blazing star blooms, so we were really trying hard to get a good shadow on here so you could see this. Um, but yeah, if you want consistent purples in your garden um, and pollinator support, like in terms of nectar, blazing stars are great. And maybe add a few different species into your yard so you get that. Yeah, uh, I the think long blooms. Maybe um, he's uh, the one who inspired posted, me yeah, for that he for talks sure. About the three and yeah, he first, put, or it's or actually on uh, Missouri Wildflower Nursery's website, and that was definitely where I got the idea uh, for that. It's so it's such a cool idea, and it's such like easy and immediate food for everything like you saw the skippers and bees are feeding on it when it's in flower and yeah. then the bird if we weren't over here right now there'd be birds everywhere on it just sitting there eating all the seeds so the next thing i want to talk about is uh the blue sage and actually alex you want to talk a little bit about this yeah how beautiful this is yeah do you want me to do this i'll do this one real quick okay. and, or do you want to hold it what do you think you just hold it and i'll just um so yeah blue sage this is uh one of the most um I, oh, I just, this is one of my favorite uh, flowers of this time of year. You'll see it blooming uh, along uh, in prairies, uh, on the roadsides in Kansas. It's really tall and beautiful right now. Any mad. prairies. Dang, that's a big bumble. Jeez, that's a big Is that a mason? It's got the sh mason bee. It's got the shiny mm. butt. Bumble so butt. so bumble this, bumble <laughs> this plant is very popular with bees. Fancy. All the big bees, all the little bees. Um, all of the uh, butterflies love it too and what are we still what else are we seeing well, skippers and stuff you know what's and then, also cool is that we don't see a lot of blues in our gardens that's either. true this is a unique blue for the garden i think yeah and this this plant has is one of those plants that has a really specific um relationship with a really specific bee the blue sage yes. bee that they found at jerry smith prairie and uh, so jerry smith is another place to go and see um a uh, blue sage in the wild in kansas city and it smells good, it looks good, it feeds everybody. It's just a wonderful plant to have in your garden. If you've got a spot for some tall, late summer collar. Yeah, and if you saw On the Prairie with Larry, um, another awesome Deep Root show, he talked extensively about Blue Sage. It's, just um, it's really great. And this one in Primrose Prairie is really tall and lanky. Again, everything it's in here. It's sophomore, it's, it, it's, it's on its second year. And it's got all this soil, nutrients, and water that it, it does. Wants. So it's going. You know, kind of. It kind of <laughs> looks like you, tall and lanky. Hey, <laughs> so and, <laughs> something to keep in mind, though, with your gardens. Once you first get oh. them planted, they're going to be a little funny. Oh, we've a, a wow. wasp wow. Heather Holmes. What kind of wasp is this? Oh, oh so cool. Wasp. Okay, Tammy. We have uh, another plant to talk about, but before we do, any questions? We do. We Holly asks a great question, and this is kind of a tricky one because of the news. Are monarchs endangered? Oh, no! <laughs> I don't know if Sydney knows what ha what's happening yet. Um, yes. No, yes, they are. They are. Um, the, but there's some promising um, uh, uh, 
news, I think, about monarchs um, this year specifically. And uh, we're seeing, th they seem to, it seems like in the last few years, the uh, Eastern population has done better in years that the Western population hasn't, and they've been flip-flopping. So um, the, the Western, the Eastern population is uh, slower this year. And of course, uh, if y'all remember, was it three years ago, two years ago, maybe we had 2020. Yeah, yeah, that was my first yeah, year. Oh my God, it was crazy. There yeah. were thousands of monarchs here at the Discovery yes. Center covering the plants. And what, how'd you describe it, Alex? They were dripping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, it, they were, it was beautiful. Yeah. But that is not, it's not typical, but it goes up and down. Yeah. Um, we've seen personally here, we've seen huge numbers of monarchs yeah. this year, but we have what they need we yes. have everything that they need yeah. so even in a drought year we still have plants that are flowering that they are feeding on so it, with the drought right now if people have plants that are not flowering or non-native plants that these insects can't feed on it's just not you're not gonna not, see them yeah you're not gonna see but them. um so but to answer your question they are endangered they're though they're yes, not listed okay. as yeah, federally okay. endangered they're listed um as an internationally endangered species um and Tammy, maybe you can put in the resources some info on that. And actually, Alex and I just did a really great interview about monarchs and why they're so important for Kansas Cityans in their backyards through Fox 4. So we will include that in the resource yeah. that set, is sent out. That's a great question. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we need to support habitat for um, species, native species, especially endangered ones. Yeah. Um, but not just thinking about the poster children yeah. I guess. but if you if you parallel monarchs decline um you can parallel it with a lot of our our native pollinators our native insects decline and it's for a lot of the same reasons we've they've lost all their habitat uh, milkweed specifically is um uh, uh poisoned and dug out at a much higher rate because of its toxicity to cattle mm -hmm. and so um when all the milkweed was lost from all the ranches and all the farms in the midwest and the prairie, tall grass prairie that's when the severe decline started happening. Mm -hmm. And I mean, ideally we're building up. I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm seeing some positive change anyway. And that- Yeah, but on a food. large scale, that's where we got to look at the data. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, that's something but, you can do to help in your own backyard. And this is what I always say, right. when you get bummed out about uh, climate change and all the sadness and conservation, play it native because it's one thing you can do as an individual to help fight against these changes. So great question. We definitely rambled on about a lot of other things, but they're also important. <laughs> um, all right, I want to talk about one more plant and then we can dive into more questions um, because you know- Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you sorry, know. I thought we were going to the um, obedient plant. Are we doing obedient too? Yeah, we've got time. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay, come here. So, okay, sir. <laughs> take a look at this. You all remember my favorite grass. Well, it's still my favorite grass. Can it is. Here? And if you can shade the camera to, or the phone so it doesn't overheat. Oh, sorry. Um, here we go. So this is eyelash grass, Boodaloo gracilis. And I just got to say, gosh darn, look at these seed heads. So as you all know, grass is flower um, and they go through pollination very differently than plants that are flowers that are pollinated by insects. They're typically... Uh, when it's a grass, they're wind pollinated. Um, so, but as the common name suggests, these look like giant false eyelashes. And actually, I just had a great idea for my Halloween costume oh, yeah, that you utilizes did. this. So, um, I might be wearing <laughs> trying to wear eyelash grasses eyelashes. Stay tuned. That? Um, that sounds like it'd be really itchy. Anyway, I just want to show how big and beautiful these are. Again, they're a little floppy, and um, because they're in their second year, but Boodaloo gracilis is a great clump forming ornamental grass for full sun and this is going to look awesome just like this for the rest of the year even through winter so if you're thinking about your garden a lot of times folks don't think about what it's going to look like in the winter uh, or even the fall because you know we're excited to plant in the spring and then kind of forget about life after that but <laughs> I think this is a great addition to your garden for winter interest and just a uh, beautiful texture to contrast some of the broader leaves and flowers that you might have in your landscape design so Oh, yeah. so look at this little baby that popped up over here. Oh my gosh. That oh. In front of the oh, and something else too. With this plant, um, I put it in a pot. I, it's so oh, easy yeah. to grow from seed. And um, I put some in a pot in my house and it, it looks awesome. And I am horrible about remembering to water it. And it still looks great. So. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there's that. Okay. okay. Do you have any questions for us? And then, um, yeah, should we go find some shade too to sit in so we, yeah. we don't overheat in our pot? Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. You guys just killed it as usual. Yes. Find some shade. We'll let you find some shade. Shade, and shade pop, pop, pop. Tree. Yeah. Pop Holly asks, what is your Instagram handle? I think it might be, you can say it, but I'll yes. include it in the, oh, yeah. uh, in the resources. Perfect. So it's Sid dot and dot L. So Sid, CYD, and then just a period, the word and period Al. But if you look up Sid and Al, you should be able to find us on Instagram. Uh, we just posted a really funny video, like I said earlier, about us uh, chasing monarch butterflies. There's a lot of really cute images of Alex running. <laughs> yes, that that monarch that we caught before was for was um, was uh, uh, filmed uh, by Sydney expertly <laughs> catching it. Uh, yeah, you can see some of my smoothest sick, moves. Sick moves. So smooth. <laughs> so smooth. But yeah, if you want to see some of our shenanigans just on our personal page, you can follow us there and we'll be just nerding out about the usual cool stuff. So yeah, thanks for the plug. Sure. And you can also see them next week, Monday at Boulevard Brewing for our yeah. kickoff event. <laughs> they will be there with shenanigans. I am oh, yeah. sure. We're so excited to meet you all. It's gonna yes, be a blast. I'm so excited. excited. Bird, and it's just excited to be around a bunch of plants, yes, native plants. I know. That's what I can't wait for. Thing. I know. So excited. So, Maureen asks, "I just found eggs on milkweed this morning. Is there still time for their life cycle?" Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They're still laying eggs right now. They're still mating right now. So the ones that are being that are hatching. The eggs that are getting laid right now might be the monarchs that go all the way to Mexico. And, oh, sorry. So, sorry. Just let me just talk it's here. It's butterfly. Talk about butterflies <laughs> and, then, no, <laughs> and then um, they, um, so the eggs will hatch uh, in like, what is it? Like seven days or something. Yeah. And then they'll um, complete the whole cycle. And that one will probably go. Yeah, all the way to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. It's so exciting. something to keep in mind, though, if you are tagging monarchs, like catching them and putting them in an enclosure, make sure you do learn how to tell the difference to male or female. Um, mm -hmm. We were, um, and also try not to catch monarchs that are in the middle of laying eggs. It's just yeah. rude, right? That's rude. Yeah. And um, also, there are lots of other things. If you go to the Monarch Watch, there are lots of other things that go into captive rearing uh, monarchs that you need to take into account. There are diseases. Um, there are parasites. different parasites that can take over. Um, uh, ra hand raising monarchs is not it's ideal. Not it's not the best way to support monarchs. Planting native plants is the best way to support it's monarchs. It's a great educational but, opportunity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, be mindful of what your goals are. Are you there to help monarchs if so? Yeah. Just plant things that support monarchs and let them stay outside mm -hmm. and if your goal is to educate like you know share it with your family or friends yeah or even for yourself that's great just right to, yeah but massive uh, breeding when you're breeding people that breed, breed tons of caterpillars can introduce new or you know diseases and more diseases into wild populations so in that monarch watch information there's also some testing kits for OE, which is one of the things that can affect caterpillars. Yeah. And um, there's another test you can do. I can't remember for something else for the caterpillars. So just if you're if you're if you're hand raising monarchs, don't do too many, you know. Um, but but and make sure that you've got clean milkweed and that you're sourcing your milkweed responsibly too. There you yeah, don't yeah. don't come steal our milkweed. Yeah. <laughs> We, we need it here. We kind of need it's it. True. Don't yeah, people people do milk. ask us a lot. Like, I'm running and out of milk. We always weed. appreciate asking. It's not, yes. it's not a problem to ask. And sometimes it's okay, but. Well, um, we, what we offer yeah. is that you can bring your caterpillars here and we'll put them on our milkweed, yeah. but you can't have Or come get milk some milkweed plants uh, that we're giving away on Saturday. Yes, but they're not ready for caterpillars yet. I mean, <laughs> not yet. Not quite. It's an investment. Um, <laughs> so Nancy asks, I thought you were supposed to put the tag on the part of the wing that looks like a mitten. You put it further yeah. out. So please clarify. On the mitten. Uh, yeah, I think that's where we, the we put it on the mitten. The back on the hind wing part. I'll look and see. There's there's a, uh, a diagram on the uh, uh, monarch watch. Have the paperwork right here, actually. I, I, I could be wrong about where we were supposed to put it. There should be a little picture. Maybe. 
Yeah, that's a great question, though. That's why. Yeah, it's so important I remember to know. the first year I did it. I definitely put a bunch of them in the wrong spot on accident. And it's our first year. There We're we a little rusty. Oh yeah, okay. we uh, we put it. Okay, we put it a little too far back. Here, let me show you. Hold on. One ah, I got that's great. great. You're right. Thank you for catching that. Thank you. This is why we, this is called citizen science. We work right. together. Yeah. Okay, here's that. So that that's is where the, it should be. I think I ended up putting a little, it just a little low. Yeah. It should still be fine. Uh, it, it's not going to hurt the monarch or anything. Yeah. Um, and then here's actually a great diagram. Oh yeah. The, the male female. Between. If you can With see the, the male. Wings. Yeah. There's the, the pouches as they're calling it here or the pouches. glands. Okay. These, they have these little round knobs here compared to the female, which is a straight line, which is what we were kind of talking about earlier, but yeah. good call. Yeah. So um, you want the, the, the place on the, they That's call right. it the, the discal cell. Discal cell. Yeah. Right the here. mitten. That, it does a mitten. Like a mitten. It does look like a mitten. That's cute. Yeah. Or like an elongated heart. Good catch. Yeah. Good catch. So yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get better at, at it. <laughs> yeah. There's tons of awesome paperwork in this, uh, in the Monarch Watch thing. Like I said, it's it got everything for you. And so I highly recommend to people who have um, a Monarch, any sort of habitat or want to do some tagging themselves, get into it. Yeah. Great, great um, question. And thank yeah. you. We always appreciate it. That's great. Um, so Joe asks, would it be good to show Monarch mimic the Viceroy butterfly? Yeah, it died. This thing died. Oh no. Hold on. Here we go. Can I have... <laughs> All right, I'm going to take over. <laughs> okay, yes, yes, it would be good to show. We have one in there. It's on the display. It's on we the did display. not show it. But we yeah. could include that. Maybe Tammy um, could include that in the resource. Yeah. Well, this thing did die. We, I think this thing, like, died. actually died forever. Um, I, Yeah, it wasn't me this time. It actually died. Okay, yeah, Viceroy. We never see Viceroys. Well, I maybe. We, I feel I like we've we seen them. Um, well, yeah, we don't see them as often as Monarchs. I don't think but, I've ever actually seen one before. Uh, uh, they look so similar, which is so cool because, um, so we didn't really talk about this, but milkweed is toxic. Yeah. And so when the caterpillars eat milkweed, that white sappy stuff is all very poisonous. Yeah. They become poisonous. And then the butterfly becomes poisonous and, uh, predators like birds know that monarch caterpillars and butterflies are poisonous. So they avoid them. So then we have the viceroy butterfly that looks so much like a monarch. Yeah. Um, but they, they do there. If you compare them side by side, you can tell the difference. Um, I think the black lines on the viceroy might be thick, slightly thicker. Um, yeah. and it's a different, I, just a different design. I'd have to look at them side by side to articulate what the differences are, but yeah, on our display thing, we definitely, if you come in the building and see that we've got it side by side there, some live or not live, but real specimens. And, um, thank you. And some caterpillars, sorry, just real quick, have to mention some caterpillars mimic yes. uh, monarch caterpillars too. What's it? The, swallowtail, uh, swallowtail, the eastern swallowtail. Oh, yes. we saw yes. a great Easter, a uh, great eastern swallowtail uh, the other Giant day. Giant swallowtail. Thank you. Giant yes. swallowtail. Yeah, it was that And we had one. never seen one before. It was, it was so, so cool. Exciting. We saw it and I was like, that looks different. Yeah. It looks like a mix <laughs> between a black eastern swallowtail and a tiger swallowtail. And it was a totally different one. Anyway, so. <laughs> there's lots of butterflies it's they're all great so we have two questions i think we can do real quickly um what was the latin name for the blue plant sorry i have too many tabs open oh, i can't get back good. <laughs> blue stage is salvia uh, azurea you got it did i do it you i got did it you did it did. and what is the common name for the taller grass there is um, eyelash grass, and then there is side oats grama okay. that is in Primrose Prairie. Those are the yeah. two grasses there, but there are other tall grasses like uh, big blue stem. Little blue stem is shorter, but it's still like kind of taller. Um, I think, she, yeah, the so taller we're, one. We're talking about show. side oats. Did I show it? Side oats, yeah. Side oats. No, not side You didn't show side oats. You were talking about eyelash. Eyelash is the bigger of the yeah. Oh, but Oodle you know, that, that eyelash grass that we were looking at, it has some awesome genetic diversity compared to the other ones in that bed. Um, yeah. You still can see it in person. And yes. About, but Absolutely. Really. Great question. Uh, okay. So Tom asks, and I think I can answer this, will plants be available soon at the, um, in, at the Missouri Department of Conservation? And that's, you guys are doing Monarch Mania this weekend, yeah. right? And you One have, week, three plants, yeah. And yeah. For the, so for the next three weekends, 
there are plant sales, right? So That's monocania, correct. and then the following week you have a plant sale, and then the twenty fourth is the deep roots plant sale. Yeah. That's so, right. yeah. yeah. So we're so super- we're, not, we're not selling. I was going to say Monocania. this Those weekend right. give, just give yeah. away no sale. So they're, I mean, they're they're smaller. That's what you're getting. Is sure. Smaller. He grew. Yeah. So that's why it's special. It's got our special touch. But the plants you can buy and pre-order are on those next two. So. September yes. 17th and September 24th. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. September is Native Plant Month. Yes. It okay. is. I ended up buying like over $500 worth of native plants already. Yeah. Already. <laughs> so, so, yeah and the sales haven't even started for September. Yeah. But I know, right? So about buying native plants, fall is a great time to buy native plants. Mm -hmm. um, usually the vendors have more in stock, so you can get way more quantity and more variety. Whereas in the spring, everyone's chomping at the bit to get plants yeah. and it's kind of harder to come out of winter and have a ton of inventory. So keep that in mind too. Uh, another great reason to plant in the fall. Yes. And if you're going to plant in the fall, don't forget to water if we have a dry winter. That's the only concern I have about people getting too excited about the fall is that if you don't water in the winter, my motto is a dry root in winter is a fried root in winter. Oh, Danny, that's so it is good. fried. So just always, you know, those baby plants are really sensitive and we want to make sure that we get them really well established. And these dry winters can be can be tough. So just be mindful. I'm going to finish the rest of the questions in our resources. So I'm going to go ahead and start closing us out because we have prizes to give to. You guys can stay on for just a second. Um, first of all, we want to say um, so thank you to both of you. You guys bring such enthusiasm and so much education in just such a tiny little amount of time. Uh, you just are treasures, as as they uh, as they said, and and that is a fact. I'm going to share my screen because we have a lot to we have a lot to share with you still. <clears throat> now it's time to award a prize, and this one's going to be a little trickier. The winner of this prize is going to receive a set of native plant note cards, each featuring a unique native plant drawing by local Kansas City artist Nancy Waugh. For those of you not lucky enough to win today, they are available for purchase on our website. Here's the quiz question. This one might be, this one might narrow down some folks. The quiz question is, who is already registered for the Planet Native Landscapes Conference next week? I know that some of you are registered. So put your name in the chat if you're registered and we will draw a name from that list. And so thank you to Alex and Sydney. Please head out to the Discovery Center soon or any of the other amazing Missouri Department of Conservation sites. It is just teeming with colors right now. The yellows are just popping right now. <clears throat> there are also tons of textures, sounds. Uh, some of my birds are migrating already, but you know, there's still tons of activity out there with our birds. Um, to learn more about what's going on at the Discovery Center, you can go to mdc.mo.gov and search for events at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. <clears throat> Excuse me. And next week, we have a great conference ahead. We and we want you there. You can save ten dollars with the code Birds and Bees and and just join us. It's going to be an amazing week of fun, fellowship, and a ton of learning. We have thirty two different speakers. We have twenty two different sessions. We have a beginner session and we have advanced topics. So there is literally something for everyone. If you can't make all of the sessions, don't worry. They're recorded. All of the resources are available for a year. And you can go back and look at some of those things at your own pace, maybe when it gets cold. So don't forget birds and bees. If you have missed any of our episodes, you can find them all at deeproots.org. We record and post each one. While you're on our site, we would be grateful if you would consider making a donation to Deep Roots as well. So let's announce our winner. Margaret Bell is our winner. Margaret, thank you twice 
for registering for Planet Native. We are so excited to see you next week. Margaret, if you would send me your uh, address, my email is Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y, at deeprootskc.org. Just let us know where we should be shipping your prize. So with that, congratulations, Margaret. We really want you at Planet Native next week. If you think Native Plants at Noon is great, Planet Native is that and more. We are so grateful for your support here, and we will see you next time, and maybe we'll see you next week. Thank you.